Well, I was uh, asked to come to Brigham and Women's Hospital in Harvard uh, a little over eight years ago. They were in the process of developing a reestablishment of a pituitary program. And uh, the reason why it's so important is, is that pituitary tumors turn out to be a pretty common problem. About 20% of people, if you look at the general population, will have some sort of pituitary problem. Most of them are benign, and if we can find them, diagnose them, and take care of them properly, it's been a wonderful uh, asset in terms of medical progress. One of the exciting things that we have is the capability of actually operating on the brain or on a brain tumor within an MRI scanner so that we can actually scan the patient before surgery, do the operation, remove the tumor, do another scan, make sure it's all out, make sure that we haven't missed anything, make sure there hasn't been a complication. And it adds so much to the precision of what we do. It's been a, a wonderful advance. The Amigo Suite actually allows more complete removal of a tumor. It helps us preserve the normal pituitary gland and the brain so that we don't cause injury in the course of doing surgery. It doesn't save us much time because it takes longer because we have to do repeated scans, but in the long run, it gives us amazingly more precision. One of the other things our program does is obviously provide long-term follow-up. So once we operate on a patient, for example, we see them every year or two, depending on how things go, because these tumors can come back. And in terms of educating them, because I really think it's so important to empower the patient with education about the problem that we've been treating. So we put on a program called Pituitary Days for patients, their caregivers, and for some of the referring physicians. And we'll do a lecture series telling them what's new and what we're doing, what's new in the field in general. And it's a forum for them uh, to get involved in a patient support group. And so it's become the nucleus for patient support for our patients and patients from other institutions as well who come to these programs. We see patients together in the neuroendocrine center with both endocrinology and neurosurgery so that we can provide joint care. When a patient uh, first comes for a pituitary assessment, it's really critical that they get both an endocrine and a, a surgical assessment. Um, pituitary tumors can secrete any of the hormones made by the pituitary gland and result in hormone excess. In some of those cases, we actually treat them medically rather than surgically. And in others, surgery is the best option. So by having an endocrinologist involved, we can consult jointly with Dr. Laws and the other neurosurgeons in our center and decide on the best course of treatment. We have multiple members of our multidisciplinary team in addition to the neurosurgeon and the endocrinologist. For example, the neuroradiologist is involved in helping us to interpret the images, such as MRI scans, that the patient might have to help to determine the size of the lesion, the nature of the lesion and whether it's compressing any of the surrounding structures. The Department of Neurosurgery is one of the most historic departments here at the Brigham and really nationally and internationally. The father of neurosurgery in the United States is often thought to be and credited to Harvey Cushing, who really did many of his landmark operations and published his major treatises in neurosurgery not even 100 meters from here. And so there's been a tradition of excellence in the Department of Neurosurgery dating back to the early 20th century, which continues today. We continue to be a hub of innovation in clinical neurosurgery and a research neurosurgery and the educational aspects of neurosurgery. Research is a really critical part of being in a big institution like this, and I think one of the mandates of being a faculty member at the Brigham Women's Hospital or Harvard Medical School uh, is that we are not only doing the day-to-day -day clinical work, but we're also thinking ahead and trying to understand how can we do this better. And that, that involves research. That involves basic biological research, understanding what drives these tumors. So specifically, my work and others that, uh, with whom we collaborate is focused on understanding the genetic drivers of these tumors, what makes these tumors go. And having those efforts co-located in the same building will allow us to, to all hopefully engender and foster more innovative ideas. The neurosurgical department here at the Brigham is not only unique in terms of the hospital, I think on a national scale it's incredibly unique. One of the reasons I was attracted to this department was the unbelievable scientific and academic environment that surrounds neurosurgery here. The technology that we are currently engaged in in tracking our patients is unparalleled. One of the three or four things I'm very excited about 
is our focus that we currently have on tracking patient outcomes. One way that we're doing, which I'm very excited about, is uh, patient reported outcome measures. And these are standardized surveys that are administered to all patients who come to our facility and are tracked throughout time up until two to five years after we see them. And they are completely patient reported. So in the past, sometimes neurosurgeons and other physicians have been focused on outcomes that are physician-centered, and these are truly patient-centered types of outcomes. We at the Brigham have a comprehensive, multidisciplinary, cohesive unit of skull-based surgery, where all the disciplines are seamlessly integrated to provide the most optimal and seamless coordinated care for patients with complex tumors of the skull base. Just to give a sense of how multidisciplinary the unit is at the Brigham and Women's, we recently had a case where the patient presented with a very complex and large skull-based tumor where we needed different disciplines. In the span of one day, we were able to obtain a neuroradiology consult, a neuropathology consult, a neuroophthalmology consult in the same day. The patient was extremely appreciative of the seamless and coordinated care that we were able to provide. Well, we're all very excited about the forthcoming move in the fall of this year to a brand new building that's called the Building of the Future for Neuroscience. And we have physically combined neurosurgery, neuroendocrinology, neurology, orthopedics. So we'll have patients in clinics immediately next to each other. And we have a great team, all of whom integrate the care that we give to the patients. And I think that we'll make this teamwork even more effective by moving to the BBF.